Here you stand, talking to a married woman. Why? Am I that interesting? Or perhaps there are other things on your mind? Well, yes. Why wouldn't I be? Are you... interested in me? It's settled then. Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iryeni, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, -E and you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey what's up guys it's Ryan and welcome to week number 85 of the top 5 Skyrim mods of the week. Now hopefully you guys will enjoy the mods that I've picked out for this week. Starting off at our number 5 spot we have The Void, a Dark Brotherhood armor replacer. Now the mod page reads, I've always felt that the Dark Brotherhood looked weird in normal vanilla Skyrim. They are assassins and the red felt like it was a bit of a bad choice for them to use. This will change that with a black version with a red hand on the chest, the symbol of the Dark Brotherhood. It can be forged but requires elven smithing for the worn set, and advanced armors for the shrouded set, and glass smithing for the ancient set. They can be tempered after completing the quest with friends like these. Now the Void is a cosmic realm of utter nothingness. It is the domain of Sithis, and is the place from which the Dedra of the realms of oblivion spawn. Now how does one best describe our dread father? Imagine a perfect, cloudless midnight, cold as winter ice and shrouded in shadow. That is Sithis. Know this, that every dark brother and sister is a child of Sithis. He whom we call Sithis has many other names. Chaos, Doom, Discord, Sithis is the Void. And that is the main message that goes along with this armor set. So that is definitely why this mod comes in at our number 5 spot. So I'd recommend downloading them. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have the More to Say mod. Now, the More to Say mod adds inconsequential dialogue to the NPCs, constructed from the NPC greetings and the miscellaneous lines from the same voice type. It is fully voiced using existing sound files from Skyrim Special Edition. It aims to stay true to each NPC's character and story, though some liberties are taken to add character depth. Currently, this mod covers the NPCs in Riverwood, but will greatly be updated as time goes on. Some of the features of this include miscellaneous dialogue with the Riverwood NPCs, fully voiced using the original game files, and the player can repair the relationship with Sven or Fandel after the Lovely Letter mini quest is completed, meaning that you'll be able to have both Sven or Fandel, or you can have, you know, either one that you want to choose at any given time during one playthrough. You won't have to actually restart the entire game to get a different follower. This mod is pretty much compatible with every other type of mod, and that's definitely why it fits in. And the thing that I found the most interesting about this mod is Fandel, the follower that you have have um, if you're inside Riverwood it'll actually give you the prompt on you know it'll ask you oh how do you like Riverwood but if you are away from Riverwood you're not in Riverwood and you go up to Fandle again and you go to talk to him you'll be able to ask him do you miss Riverwood I always thought that was a great aspect of this mod and I thought that was really awesome that they were able to tell oh you're not in Riverwood right now we're gonna give you this dialogue option oh you're in Riverwood now how about you ask him how he likes it here I think that's really cool that they were able to do that and put it together and it fits seamlessly and it just really grips you to all the characters that are in Riverwood and hopefully it'll spread to Whiterun soon and all the other cities later on in the future. So that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number 4 spot so I strongly recommend downloading more to say. Coming in at our number 3 spot, we have Imitations, Armor and Clothing Extravaganza. Now this mod comes with 20 sets of models for masculine and feminine bodies that have been created which have color variations depending on the vanilla models used. The stats are roughly based on their vanilla equivalents, and it will also replace the models of the Somerset Shadows armors and Linway's armor. In addition to specific quest related conditions for unlocking the crafting recipes for certain armors, every item added by this mod requires that you have the tailoring supplies in your inventory to craft them. You can grab yourself one at the forge under the miscellaneous category, and the recipes will not show up if you do not have this item in the inventory, so that's very important that you go into the miscellaneous section and you craft these tailoring supplies in order to be able to craft this armor included in the mod. So for the showcase of this mod, I wanted to show off all of the different combinations of armor that you can actually choose. 
Now they're obviously not all included here because there's like over hundreds of different combinations of different clothes that you can use. But here I am just mixing and matching. Some of them don't look great whenever I combine them together, but some of them aren't meant to be combined. But your options are endless when it comes to this mod and there's 20 sets of unique armor pieces that have been added into the game that you can mix and match. And they're all full sets. Like there's the hood, there's the chest pieces, then there's the boots and the bracers as well. And those are all unique and you can combine them and do whatever you want. And the customization with this mod is endless and that's definitely why it comes in at a number three spot. So I strongly recommend downloading the imitations armor and clothing extravaganza. Our next mod is something that I think should have been in the game from the get-go. It's called Real Wildlife. Now let me give you a little bit of a description of what this mod does. Over 490 new variants of the natural wildlife in Skyrim have been added. There's revised AI and wildlife faction interaction, and also 16 new lore-friendly diseases, 45 new ingredients, 21 new foods, and 21 new recipes. Now like I said, there's 490 different disease-based variants of the following. There's bears, which come with normal cave and snow, cows, chickens, deer, dogs, elk, foxes, arctic foxes, frostbite spiders, giants, goats, horkers, horses, ice wraiths, mud crabs, rabbits, saber cats, which is normal and snow, skeevers, spriggans, spring and matrons, trolls, frost trolls, and many, many more. The lore-friendly diseases added in this mod now include blood lung, collie wobbles, damp worm, droops, feeble limb, green spare, hell joint, red rage, shakes, swamp fever, tickle britch, wither, witless pox, and yellow tick. Now based on these diseases, there is an enhanced difficulty that comes along with it, along with the new ingredient types as well, which is the eyes, the hearts, the claws, and the meat for appropriate creatures. As you can see when I kill this elk, I'll be able to actually search him and you'll be able to find the lungs. We can find, you know, the animal skull itself, the original venison and the antlers that originally came within the vanilla game. And there's also the heart and everything like that. You can gather all of the pieces of the animal and use it for your own cooking ingredients and making potions as well as other things. Now, now, like I said, I think this mod is a feature that should have been in the game from the get-go because whenever you kill an elk, all you get is his antlers and the venison. You don't really get anything else on the inside. And it's a lot more realistic to be able to harvest everything, and I really like that. It just adds way more, you know, drive to go out and hunt and be able to collect way more things and sell them, or you can use them for potions, and the opportunities are just endless with this mod. So that's definitely why it comes in at a number two spot, so I strongly recommend downloading this mod. Coming in at our number one spot, we have the Rat's Nest Tower. Now, this is a player home that is a big tower, and it has everything that you need for an adventurous life in Skyrim, such as horse stables, breathtaking scenery, a kitchen area with lots of custom storage, a lab with lots of custom storage, a nice living area, two follower beds, many bookshelves, many chests and display cases, along with many mannequins, and a basement with a big smithing area. There's also a wine cellar, a display, museum area, and an old Dwemer bath. The key is located in a chest that is near the main door and like as for all of my top five mod videos where we have a house mod i'm going to be giving you guys a full tour of the entire house so let's begin So in this tower of a player home mod, I do believe that everything is nice and neat and put together. There's also a lot of decorations on the wall and lots of different areas to explore and things to use in this house. And that's definitely what I like in a house mod. And that's definitely why it comes in at our number one spot. So I'd strongly recommend downloading the Rat's Nest Tower.
So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I would appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you knew. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions through there as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I'll talk to you guys later.